The Embassy of the Republic of Cuba in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines will open today, Monday, November 28th, open a book of condolences for former President Fidel Castro, who died on Friday, November 25th. A release from the embassy said, Upon the death of the Commander-in-Chief of the Cuban Revolution, Dr. Fidel Castro, the Embassy of the Republic of Cuba will open a book of condolences, which will be available at the, at the mission's headquarters from Monday the 28th of November until Sunday, December 4th, between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. The Embassy of the Republic of Cuba is located at Rathel Mill. St. Francis and the Grenadines will honor the late Fidel Alessandro Castro in an appropriate manner during the immediate period of mourning and thereafter. Castro, who governed the Republic of Cuba from 1959 to 2008, died on Friday, November 25th, at the age of 90. Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonsalves, during an address to the nation this morning on the National Broadcasting Cooperation, NBC Radio, described Castro as an iconic revolutionary who was loved in Cuba and in SVG. One of the Caribbean's most senior and longest serving leaders has made a clarion call to young people to study the life and ideals of Fidel Alessandro Castro and immortalize the iconic Cuban revolutionary. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves made the call as he and other world leaders, Marxists, socialists and historians began to reminisce on the life of the former Cuban president who died last Friday. Gonsalves said it was with deep and heartfelt sadness that the government and the people of SVG learned last Friday of the death of the man he described as a very dear friend of SVG. He said Castro successfully led the political process to unshackle Cuba from debilitating imperialism and strove to establish a just and inclusive society in his people's interest, free of exploitation. The Prime Minister said earlier on Saturday, he had conveyed the condolences of the government and the people of SVG to the government and people of Cuba and to the Cuban President Raul Castro and the family of Fidel. He said SVG will honor Fidel appropriately during his immediate period of mourning and thereafter. Over the past decade, more and more Vincentian students have been selected as valedictorians for the various faculties across the four campuses of the University of the West Indies. This year was no exception as Elizabeth Bullock and Calvin Charles were among six students at the St. Augustine campus of the University of West Indies who were given this prestigious accolade. The government of St. Vincent's and the Grenadines through the Regional Integration and Diaspora Unit, RIDU, are conducting a diaspora mapping exercise funded by the International Organization for Migration, IOM. Through the IOM Development Fund, IDF, the project was launched at the High Commission for St. Vincent's and the Grenadines in London with presentations by Renetta Peters RIDU and Natalie Hanley, IOM, to a fully packed attendance including H.E. Siano Lewis, High Commissioner, Doris Charles, Minister Counselor, Caroline DeFreitas Soa, Counselor, Dr. Christopher Stange, Honor, Honor Counsel, and Chairpersons of the National Committee presenting the various SVG associations across the UK. Venezuelan ambassador to St. Vincent's and the Grenadines, Yuri Pimentel, said Venezuela and this country have worked together on a number of programs over the years to enhance the lives of their citizens. He made this statement during a ceremony held to celebrate the 35th anniversary of diplomatic relations between St. Vincent's and the Grenadines and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Ambassador Pimentel said both governments have worked together in areas of construction of the Argyle International Airport as well as other infrastructure. Alliances such as ALBA, education and provision of books to schools and libraries. Meanwhile, Sir Louis Straker, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Commerce, said both countries have enjoyed extraordinary diplomatic relations over the years, which they expect to grow even stronger. Friday, November 25th, saw the launch of Digicel's Christmas campaign at one of its local branches, 
to sell. At 11 a.m., the launch highlighted giveaways to customers as well as media personnel present. Throughout the month of December, Digicel customers can win up to $150,000 in the Digicel promotional campaigns. And by getting gifted, Digicel is going to give you a gift, and we hope we cause a trickle-down effect where you will give someone who's less fortunate than yourself someone to bring a smile on their face for Christmas. Think about the kids, think about the families who are not as fortunate as you to be here this morning to purchase one of our services or products. Think of the unfortunate situations in other countries where people cannot open a door and call it their home, sit at a table and have a healthy meal, or even see Christmas Day because they're suffering from some terminal illness. So this year Digicel is going to gift you and we are hoping in return you will gift someone. And through that I will go through what you have to do to be gifted by Digicel. We have five golden tickets in the market and those five golden tickets add up to a sum of 35,000 EC dollars. There will be two winners of a golden ticket that each will hold $10,000. So when you purchase anything at any Digicel store, any Digicel vendor, make sure you get that little scratch card. Because when you scratch the back of that card, you can just be a lucky winner of $10,000. The St. Vincent Shipyard Limited, SSL, at Otley Hall is seeking new investors to help rectify cash flow problems, which it says have led to workers not receiving their full wages for some time now. Daniel Ravoti, the company's managing director, last Friday took the decision to close the shipyard and discontinue normal operations due to a technical breakdown of the company. Your sports news is up next.